Okay, so as requested, I'm going to do a little talk through of my homemade tape recorder circuit. And stuff. So before I explain what each part of the circuit is, I just want to go over a couple of other little things here. So, these three switches, um, there's one here, one here, and one here. These are all linked, so they'll, they'll, all three of them will either be in the play position or the record position. And also, the two 12 volt supplies, there's one here and one here, they're both the same supply. And also, all the grounds are the same as well. So, yeah, let's uh, go through a little um, talk through of the circuit. Well, I'm going to start with the recording part of the circuit because that's the most complicated part. So, over here we have the bias oscillator. Now, in my particular tape recorder, it oscillates at about 96 kilohertz and it uses the array set itself as the actual bias oscillator coil, so that head's doing two jobs at once, so it's erasing the tape and being the bias oscillator coil. Then over here we've got the recording amplifier, so our audio signal comes in here, you can control the level by this um, potentiometer here, and that gets amplified by this op amp here. Just gives it a little bit of a boost. Then got two buffers here. Now these are both the same chip. It's a dual op amp. I've used a TL072 here. So some of the signal goes into this one here, and that goes into our meter. And the rest of the signal goes into this one, and then into this capacitor to take out all the DC because we only want AC at this point. This thing here is the bias trap. Now what that does is it stops the high frequency from the bias getting up into the amplifier section. And that's tuned to the same frequency that the bias is oscillating at. So these are the particular values I use to get 96 kilohertz. Your different... Um, if you build the circuit, you might get a different frequency. Uh, so I'm going to just play around with that until you get the right thing. One thing I found, though, is that you might be able to um, just not use this anyway, because I did a little experiment, and I just shorted across the um, bias trap, and it didn't really affect the recording quality in any way, so, yeah, might not even need to put that in. Now, you might be asking about equalization, because, you know, recording onto a tape, Tape heads are more sensitive to low frequencies than they are to high frequencies. Well, that's because they're inductive devices. So what I've done is I've just put a 10K resistor between the recording amp and the head. And that seems to work relatively well enough. It defeats all the inductive nature of the head, so we get a nice flat recording onto the tape. Well, I hope that's... Um, explain that. I'm not very good at, at, at explaining things, or talking. Speaking is pretty hard for me, but yeah. Just go over the playback circuit now, so you can see we've got the switches in already in the play position. So, I've got another op-amp here. This is a, another TL072. So, this side here actually amplifies the head and got here the um, capacitors and resistors to set the gain and the equalization. It's not exactly perfect, it's um, more closer to RIAA equalization. I haven't really been able to find the right values to get the right kind of equalization, but that works close enough. And of course, this op amp here just gives a little bit more of a boost and out of the out to the amplifier. 
Of course, we can set the amount of boost we get with that potentiometer there. Like I said, it's not perfect. I might actually add another transistor in here to give it just a little bit more um, to boost the signal before it gets into the op amps so the op amps don't have to do as much amplification because it is a little noisy. There's quite a lot of hiss there. And it looks like I've forgotten to mark one of the capacitors, so I'm just going to go and find a pen. When I can find a pen, I can never find a pen when I need one. Um, Alright, I'll just do it in pencil. Okay, so this was 10 microfarads. Also, the other thing I want to talk about is the op amps, the way I've got them biased. So, they're set up as um, non inverting amplifiers. So, what I've actually done here is on the positive input, or non inverting input rather, I've got one 100k resistor going to the positive and another 100k resistor going to the negative and on the feedback instead of connecting this resistor directly to ground I've put a little capacitor there because we only want to amplify the AC we don't want to amplify DC and I've done the same here as well anyway that's um, yeah that's just about it I know this was a absolutely terrible explanation of how this tape recorder works. I've drawn out this schematic about 500 times and this was about as best as I could get it. And as you can see, it still made mistakes. I had to um, draw it out again and paste the two drawings together. My train of thought is going now, so yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna bugger off now. I've waffled on for over seven minutes, so, yeah. Okay, I hope I can do this before the battery in both cameras dies. But, let's measure the bias voltage and the erase voltage. So, probe the erase here. And we have about... 87 volts peak to peak at about 95 kilohertz and at the record playhead get that on there about 40 volts I don't know if I was holding the camera up there because I look through my eyes instead of the camera's viewfinder when I'm doing these things